Joan Kuyak was recently a special guest for an evening at an activism course in Ottawa to talk about the ideas in her new book, Community Organizing, A Holistic Approach. The book is an updated and rewritten sequel to her acclaimed 1990 Fighting for Hope, Organizing to Realize Our Dreams. It contains perspective, insight, and lessons learned from over 40 years of community organizing and activism, from the community level in different Ontario cities through national and international organizing, most recently as founding director of Mining Watch Canada from 1998 to 2008. I wanted something that looked at all aspects of how the world works, that um, looked at our working together, our social lives, that looked at our cultural and spiritual lives, that looked at our political lives, and looked at the environment and economics, so that it was a whole picture um, where we, and within that circle, where we took care of one another, where we, we recreated reclaimed our, our culture from one that destroyed the earth to one that built life, uh, where we had an economics that was about, about, about healing and caring for one another, not about currency and money, and about a politics that was uh, about real change, about just redistributing power. So that when you put it all together, yeah, that is holistic. You know, people are talking about it's becoming a movement to go back to credit unions, cas <laughs> populaires. It's it's a, a huge food sovereignty movement, which is just the most exciting part of the movement around. A big peace movement starting to build again. You know, um, people wanting to heal the earth, people paying attention to toxins, um, leadership from Aboriginal people. Some of the stuff happening in Bolivia is actually really amazing. I mean, what other president? But Morales would reverse a huge mega project because the indigenous people said they objected to it. Um, leadership from the Zapatistas to the Anishinaabe. You know, there's just all sorts of exciting stuff going on here and in other parts of the world. And we're in the belly of the beast. I mean, if we can see it here, imagine what's happening in other countries. There's a poem in there too that I wrote about called Gardening in Sudbury, which which is all about the process of building up the soil, figuring out what you're going to do with compost, when you need the outside agitators because there's no life in a part of the soil, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and then you can grow your own seeds if you do it properly. We'll, we'll multiply, we'll get bigger instead of smaller. But there's so much history in the left of, of organizing and building towards something and then dogma and divisiveness and anger splits us all up and we go different directions. And it doesn't mean we won't have to deal with that. I, there's always going to be people doing that, whether they're doing it just because they're dysfunctional or they're doing it because they're cops. Um, we're always going to deal with that in the work we're doing. The question is making the soil rich enough that it can deal with those infestations when they happen. Most of us need to hear that we, 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 we live to serve the people. That, that serving the people is where the joy is. Doing work that matters is where the joy is. Um, but, but you can't serve the people if you're sick. So you, you do need to keep your strength. Unless you can grieve and lament and talk about your fear and your horror in community, in a safe place, you're paralyzed by that. And I think it happens to activists too. I mean, we go through moments when it's just too much. It's just too horrible. And you don't want to know one other thing. Um, and, and when that happens, it, it, the darkness can shut you down. Eh? And I think we need to realize that everybody's like that. That the darkness shuts it down. It doesn't empower us. And so we need to look at our actions as ways that we can empower people to take steps and build community together. We don't need to frighten them anymore. And it, the state knows that really well. The state seeks to create terror. Um, Oakland was about creating terror. It's taking a movement that's beautiful and creating terror. And in a lot of times what you're doing when you're organizing is trying to figure out 
how you can make it safe for people to dissent. The Occupy movement is making that it's safe for people to talk about what, right now. But there's, there's, there's always this balance, and I do talk about that in the book, about when you're organizing, there's always this back and forth, this dance of power. And, and our only strength is, is the people. Our only strength is the moral high ground in the people. And if we do things that mean people don't want to come to the movement, that go outside their, their moral frame, they'll flee like pigeons. <laughs> and so we, what, the, what the power structures are trying to do all the time is to, to, to break that up, to make us divide, to make us fight each other, to find ways to pick off the leaders, to co-opt people. And, and the dance between the forces of liberation and the forces of death, as I've come to think of them, is, is, a, is, not, um, is not one that's, that's going to uh, go forward if people are, terror, are more and more terrified. So part of it is building community, building strength, finding ways to support one another. And if we don't go back down to doing that all the time, will end up with no base. Um, and it's, it's tempting always. I mean, organizations do this all the time. We set up um, organizations that think they're speaking for people, but they haven't spent any time discovering whether they really do. Right? Um, and so building the movement is about building community. It's building community in neighborhoods as much as we can, but if that doesn't work, building it across interests and functions and and uh, and because we're going to be in this for the rest of our lives, our children's lives, and we need to build, we need to build base community and strength so that we can do it. Change activities that work. Everywhere there are activists who have learned and are learning how to put the creation of relationships and building of community at the heart of their efforts. They're building up the soil that will nourish real change. What they do works. Change activities that work do the following. They create vision and enthusiasm so that many diverse people want to be committed to the work. They build a growing base of support for an equitable society. They make understanding about an effective work on key issues accessible to previously uninformed and inactive people. They create and model sustainable alternatives for the provision of food, shelter, energy, transportation, and the care of children, the disabled, and the elderly. They recreate and protect the commons. They establish multiplying numbers of relationships of respect for all beings and each other, kindness and dignity. They do not seek to increase public fear. By focusing on key contradictions in the system, they transform the power of predatory elites, redistribute wealth, and establish equity. That's what the book's about.